Hey guys, so I've been asked almost since I started this channel if I teach you guys how to build a PC, and today, I finally got the ability to do so. Before we begin, there are some things you guys need to know. Building a computer is very dangerous and requires some high caliber equipment, like a screwdriver and a knife or scissors for those unopened boxes. Now that you have everything you need, let's begin. First things first, we're going to need a case. To be honest, you don't actually need to go out and buy one of these. I've seen people put computers in cardboard boxes, milk crates, even their desks, but this computer is going to be assembled inside this. The Corsair 100R. This case comes with one case fan as well as a side panel to look in and see all of your pretty components. Some people find this tacky, but I like looking inside my computer. Reminds me of a skeleton pocket watch. Let's go ahead and take the side panels off. Now I like to make things easy, so after you've taken both side panels off, go ahead and grab your hard drive or SSD. I'm using the Seagate 1TB 7200 RPM hard drive. Now, in some cases you may have to screw in the drive, but this case had these little pins here in the drive bay. All I had to do was pop them in, and the drive was good to go. After all my hard drives are in, I typically prep the motherboard. This is the Asus Rampage 4 Extreme motherboard, which houses the original 2011 socket. The CPU I used was the 3960X, which is a 6-core processor that I believed was clocked at 3.3 GHz. Now, the CPU was already in there, but I'll go ahead and take it out and show you guys how to install it. The most important thing is to know how the CPU fits into the socket. Most current CPUs have a triangle here to make it simple. Just match up the triangles and you should be good. After that, I generally move on to the RAM. Make sure to check your motherboard's manual before installing the RAM as some motherboards are really picky about where you install these. For this motherboard, A1 and B1 are over here, so that's where I'll be installing them. Before we install the motherboard, I need to talk about standoffs. These things ensure that you don't ground out your motherboard. In layman's terms, use these or risk frying your mobile. This case came with them pre-installed, but typically they look like this. The IO shield is another thing you want to install. These ensure dust and bugs don't get into your PC. Not necessary, but good to have. These can also be a pain to install. Once you have those out of the way and you make sure your case's cables aren't intruding, go ahead and position the case like a good lever and install the motherboard. Up next, we have our power supply. This is the EVGA Supernova 80 Plus Gold Power Supply. It's a 650 watt which gives us a decent bit of wiggle room if we ever decide to upgrade. Never skimp out on the power supply guys, wise words from a new friend. To install it, just make sure the power switch faces the outside of the case. You wouldn't believe how often people flip that around. Not me of course, I never make mistakes. Screw in the four screws and you're done. Now comes the cables. Power cord, CPU, SATA, VGA, and 24 pin. You're also going to be given a Molex. Molex. Yeah, we're not going to use that. Before we mess with the power cables though, we need to work with these. These cables come standard with most cases today. You typically have your HD audio, your USB 3.0 or USB 2.0, and your front panel headers. Let's go ahead and plug these into the motherboard. I like to start with the USB 3.0 as it's the largest cable. Now, depending on your board, you'll have to find the best route for this thing. For me, the plug's at the bottom, which makes things simple. As you plug it in, be sure not to bend any of the pins. Do that, and none of your case's USBs will work. Next, we have our front panel headers. These can be the most difficult thing about building a PC. At least, they always were for me. Plug these in wrong, and the stupid PC won't even turn on. Consult your motherboard's manual or even the motherboard itself to see where these go. Lastly, your HD audio. This one's easy. Just find the HD audio plug and pop it in. Now, all of those cables go in a specific way, but they're keyed accordingly so it should be smooth sailing after this part. Time for some cable management. Now, cable management isn't everything, but tidy cabling ensures good airflow as well as keeps your friends from making fun of you. If you prefer not to get ridiculed for justifiable reason, then I suggest you make your build look as tidy as possible. Don't worry, I'll show you how. Now, some cases kind of limit what you can do with your cables, but be creative. I promise it's worth the extra work. 
Be sure to cable manage as you go, otherwise it may end up being too late by the time you're done. Once you've plugged the CPU and mobile cables in, you can now plug in the SATA power. We'll plug the end of this into our hard drive and tuck the rest of the cable away. Next, we're going to plug in the GPU cable. But wait, where's our GPU? This is the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 960. Before we cable it, let's go through how to install it. On this particular case, we have to remove this guard, as well as remove the GPU grates. Once this is done, make sure you fit the GPU into one of your PCI X16 slots. Once it's locked in, screw the card down, put the guard back on, and cable accordingly. Now, I know I've been stressing cable management, and if you don't want to do it, that's fine. But the last cabling step we have to take is plugging in all of your SATA cords. These SATA data cords plug into optical drives as well as hard drives and SSDs. Be sure you plug the drive that you'll be using your operating system on into SATA 1. This won't always cause issues, but it definitely could down the road. Once that's in, we can move on to cooling our CPU. Now, I get this question a lot. Air cooling or liquid cooling? And both are good, but I prefer liquid. It really does offer better cooling and upgradability wise, the difference between air and water coolers when buying a new CPU in Mobo is equal to buying a new retention ring or brand new air cooler. It's just a better choice. This is the Corsair Hydro H55 liquid cooler. I chose it because it was more compact and fit the fan that came pre-installed in the case. Take a look. Now, because this is a Corsair case and a Corsair liquid cooler, the fan they gave us and the fan that's already inside are almost the exact same. All I did was replace the fan screws that were already in the fan and replace them with these longer screws that could make it to the radiator. Since we ended up with a leftover fan, I decided to strap it to the other side of the radiator for better airflow. I then plugged the newly inserted fan into one of the fan headers and tucked the cord away. Now for this next part, you're going to need some thermal paste. You'll also need to build one of the retention rings that your liquid cooler came with. Being that this board houses a 2011 socket, I grabbed the 2011 compatible retention ring. Once the ring is built, go ahead and apply the thermal paste. I swear to god if you make fun of me for how I apply thermal paste, we're gonna have an issue. After the thermal paste has been applied, take the liquid cooler and screw it down to the board. Next, you need to know where to plug this in. If your motherboard supports an AIO or water pump header, then plug it into there. If it does not have one of those headers, then plugging it into a CPU fan header should do the trick. Now, this next part is optional, but I wanted to install another fan at the top of the case. This is a blue LED silent case fan that was sent to me by First Player. I've reviewed their keyboards and LED mouse pads before, and they wanted me to do a review of this thing. To be honest, there was no way I was going to make a full video review, but I can do a short one here. The fan is pretty, extremely quiet, and built very well. There was one design flaw though, but that was pretty easy to fix. Let's go ahead and take our fan screws and mount this bad boy up. I decided to position the fan so that it would blow air out of the case. I did the same thing with the back fan so that all of the hot air would be expelled from every angle. Now, normally I like to have one fan pulling air in, but it just wasn't going to work with this case. After I got it all screwed in, I plugged it into one of the motherboard's fan headers and tucked away the cord. And that's how you build a computer. Oh, hang on. This is always my favorite part. Now all you need is to install your operating system and you're good to go. I hope this video was able to help you and welcome to PC gaming. Now, what should I do with this thing?